Hey everyone, welcome back to Virtualization How To, and I'm Brandon Lee. Today I'm excited to share my review of a new and powerful NAS device designed for home labs and virtualization enthusiasts, the TerraMaster F8 SSD Plus All Flash NAS. Now this is an 8-bay NVMe storage device that boasts some really impressive specs and features and I had the chance to put it through its paces. So let's dive in and see how it performs with iSCSI data stores for virtualization. So let's get started. TerraMaster sent over their F8 SSE Plus for me to take a look at. But just to be clear, this is not a paid review outside of the unit being sent over, in fact, I also supplied my own NVMe drives for the test. So just a level set, my thoughts and opinions of the device are my own. The TerraMaster F8 SSD Plus is an interesting NAS device with some really great features and capabilities. This unit is powered by an Intel N305 8-core i3 processor, and it comes with 16 to 32 gigs of DDR5 memory, depending on your configuration. It also features a 10 gig base T adapter for high speed networking, and it also supports up to 64 terabytes of NVMe storage across its eight M.2 slots. So lots of storage potential with this NAS device. Now the model I reviewed is the plus version of the F8. Now the plus version packs even more power compared to the base F8 SSD model that comes with an Intel N95 four core processor, eight to 16 gigs of DDR5 memory and a two and a half gig network adapter. So if you need more performance, the plus model is definitely the way to go. It has the much better hardware specs and storage potential. Now moving on to the design and build quality. The F8 SSD Plus has a compact and sleek design that can stand upright or lay on its side thanks to the rubber feet. It seems to be built with ease of access in mind. You only need to remove one thumb screw to slide out the internals and access the M.2 slots. Now this makes adding or swapping NVMe drives and not really a hassle at all. Now the unit also comes with aluminum heat sinks and rubber bands to attach those to the NVMe drives, which I think is a nice touch, especially considering the heat generated by multiple high performance NVMe drives. Setting up the TerraMaster F8 SSD Plus is quite simple. And even though I didn't have any prior experience with TerraMaster and their TOS software, this version has TOS 6. You can use their desktop app to discover the device, initiate the setup, and the app basically guides you through downloading the bootloader, configuring the super user, creating the storage pools, and you have many options there for creating RAID arrays, such as the T-RAID, as well as traditional RAID levels like RAID 1, 5, and 6. But all in all, I think that the experience and setup was very easy. Now let me show you guys around TOS 6, as well as a few of the storage settings and the interface. As you guys can see, I'm logged into the interface of the TerraMaster NAS unit. This TOS 6 interface is really nice to navigate around, but I wanted to show you guys around mainly the storage. So I'm gonna click the control panel icon. We're gonna scroll down to the storage manager, and I'm just going to show you guys what I've got going on. I have created the NVMe volume that contains six Samsung 980 Pro two terabyte NVMe drives. And that is minus the capacity of one of those uh, Samsung 980 Pro two terabyte units for parity information. And that is so we can suffer a failure of a device and still have our data. And that's the whole beauty and benefit of RAID arrays. If I expand this, you can see, we can see more the U space, which is the VD bench, HDI bench test virtual machines that I have spun up on this particular data store. If we click down to storage pool, we can see the actual storage pool that I have initialized. I think it took around three to four hours for it to do its thing with creating the storage pool as far as creating the parity information in the array. And we can see the the NVMe drives, as I mentioned earlier, the six Samsung SSD 980 Pro two terabyte units. ButterFS, of course, on the file system and also 
T-RAID. So T-RAID is basically the equivalent of traditional RAID 5 with some advantages. So you're, you're losing the equivalent of one of my 980 Pro 2 terabyte NVMe drives is used on parity information. However, T-RAID has advantages over traditional RAID, so like a RAID 5, in the sense that you can use dissimilar drive information. So in the future, if you want to add a 4 terabyte drive to this storage pool, then you can do that with T-RAID. Also, there is the uh, notion of T-RAID Plus, which is the equivalent of RAID 6. So I would lose the equivalent of two of my two terabyte NVMe drive. So I went with T-RAID and not T-RAID Plus due to getting more out of the capacity. And also, generally speaking, RAID 6 type RAID configurations are usually not recommended with flash devices just due to the extra parity information that gets written on those devices. So your write amplification with those devices is much greater than it is with RAID 5, which has less parity information that gets written with every write operation, if that makes sense. So we've got uh, disks here. You've got some really nice, um, I guess, just overview of health information. Under the disk menu, we can see a little bit more detailed information. We've got smart checks. We've got uh, disk log for using the Iron Wolf drives in hybrid configurations, you're going to see that information here. That is pretty much the control panel controls and configuration under storage pool. Now I went with the default T-RAID setup, which is similar to RAID 5, but it has some advantages, uh, such as allowing you to use dissimilar disk sizes. And it makes that very flexible for home lab environments, because if I want to upgrade NVMe drives later and larger sizes are available or more affordable, I can easily do that and integrate with my existing RAID setup without having to blow everything away, reconfigure the RAID array, and then restore data. Now for virtualization enthusiasts, the F8 SSD Plus makes setting up iSCSI LUNs very straightforward thanks to TOS 6. Once again, you can easily install the iSCSI app from the App Center and configure the targets for your iSCSI LUNs. I was able to quickly set up an iSCSI LUN and connect it to my VMware vSphere environment without any issues whatsoever, and Proxmox the same as well. If I click on my apps here, I have the iSCSI Manager, and this is an app that you will need to install if you want, like myself, to create an iSCSI LUN to target with virtual hosts, uh, hypervisor hosts, you're gonna need to install this application. So if I click iSCSI Manager, here is where we actually set up the iSCSI target or that LUN that you want to present to your virtual hosts that you want to have that shared storage. Now, I've already gone through this wizard. I think if I click plus here, you can see basically it, it's pretty simple. It's straightforward. The IQN or the target address is generated for you and you can name the, the target. You can set up CHAP authentication if you want to make things even more secure. I think in my testing, I did not do that. I just left everything wide open uh, just for testing, but in production environments, definitely something you probably want to do. Uh, so pretty straightforward on setting up that target. You can see the LUN here, which equates to that uh, storage pool that I showed you on the other configuration screen. You can see uh, the storage allocation, which is thin. You can see location, capacity, description of that iSCSI LUN, and some other information there. Also something you're going to want to do, it took me a moment to find where this was. I saw that it was not enabled. You're going to want to enable multiple connections to your iSCSI target. And that is due to the fact that if you've got multiple hypervisors, uh, Proxmox, VMware, whatever the case is, you're going to want all of those hosts to be able to connect to that target for the purposes of shared storage intuitively. You want to enable multiple connections. And to do that, it's under the iSCSI target. You click here. Here just to set the focus on your target that you have created and then the little pencil icon to edit. You need to click the next icon and then here there is a simple checkbox for allow multiple connections. Let's get to the exciting bit. Let's talk performance. I used a tool called HCI Bench which includes another very well-known tool called VD Bench to test the iSCSI data store performance. Let me give you guys a rundown of running VD Bench on this setup 
and the tests that I ran to get the results. Okay, guys, I want to show you the HCI Bench configuration. I've got a VMware vSphere connected up here, and I'm targeting the data store that is running off the TerraMaster F8 SSD Plus with the NVMe flash storage. And I've got just a generic test configure here. We've got 70% uh, read, we've got 100% random, and 30% workload set with 4K block size. And so I'm just going to kick this off and I'm going to show you guys the testing and we're going to look at performance during the test. Okay, so now you can see we've got the note that the VD Bench performance test has begun. We can click the link that's provided and it will open up the Grafana interface that will show us real time our IOPS, throughput, latency, and all of this good information that we want to take a look at this TerraMaster F8 SSD Plus. Now we're going to see this IOPS fluctuate. We're going to see it go up to 100K, we'll see it go down to probably 40K, and that is due to the random nature of the tests to hopefully simulate real world workloads and how those will react on this storage subsystem. Okay guys, so you can see that the test is now finished and we go back and our graph has stopped really gathering any new information. So if we go back to the HCI Bench configuration page, we can close the window on the test, then we can review the results result here. So I'm going to click into the latest folder. So it creates a nice PDF files that you can look at. We can see here we're almost 70,000 IOPS. I've ran this three or four times and I've seen a little bit over 70 in previous attempts. So right along there is what I am seeing with this particular benchmark test configuration. Read latency is really good, write latency really good, and overall the 95th percentile latency is only 3.81 milliseconds. So very good on that front. And as we can see, IOPS performance charts, we've got 78.1, 320 megabytes per second, and some test information here. So I really like this benchmark just to see what kind of performance we are seeing with this NAS device. So as you guys saw, with a configuration of 4K block size, 70% read, 30% write, and 100% random workloads, which is very standard across virtualized environments, I achieved over 71,000 IOPS as an average and a throughput of around 280 megabytes per second with an average latency of just under one millisecond. Now for a home lab setup, that is very impressive. So I think you're going to be very pleased with the performance of this NAS device if you want to run many workloads, including virtual machines, containers, and what have you in a shared storage setup. Okay, let's break down the pros and cons of this TerraMaster F8 SSD Plus. On the positive side, I think the TerraMaster F8 SSD Plus is easy to set up. I like TOS 6. It's very intuitive. It provides excellent performance. As we saw, 71,000 IOPS for a home lab environment. That's really excellent. And it operates very smoothly. It has a compact design and it includes NVMe heat sinks that I think is a great addition to this package that you receive. And let's not forget that it has 10 gig ethernet, which I think really is a requirement when you're talking about the throughput of NVMe devices. And let's face it, we are not saturating the NVMe devices as well. However, there are a few downsides. It only has one network adapter. The network adapter is not VLAN aware. And the NVMe slots, I believe, are PCI Gen 3, meaning you won't get full Gen 4 performance if you have Gen 4 NVMe drives. Also, I think having two network adapters, like two 10 gig adapters, would have been ideal to separate the storage and management traffic, especially since we can't use VLANs with the single network adapter, or at least I've not figured out how to do that in TOS 6. The option does not look to present itself, but I'll let you guys know if I discover how to do that. But overall, these are minor issues, I think, for most home lab users, especially if you're looking for just a really good NAS device that's going to provide high throughput, high IOPS, or multiple hypervisor hosts, whichever you choose, VMware ESXi or Proxmox VE in your home lab. So wrapping things up, I think the TerraMaster F8 SSC Plus is a powerful, versatile little NAS for home lab enthusiasts looking to run virtual workloads very efficiently. With its really fast performance, easy setup, and compact design, I think it's definitely worth considering 
If you're in the market for a high-performance NAS solution and shared storage, which allows you to effectively take, take advantage of those uh, features in clustering, such as a Proxmox cluster with high availability, live migration, and all of those failover features that we really like to have in the home lab that we definitely have in enterprise production environment. Well, thanks for watching, guys. If you found this review helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to Virtualization How To for more reviews and tech content. Hit the notification bell to stay updated on our latest videos. Check out my latest blog, Tech to Cloud. I think you'll find some really interesting things there as well. Drop any questions or comments below, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on previous experience you have with TerraMaster or other NAS devices that you are using in the home lab environment. Well, keep on home labbing, Stay safe out there, and I will see you guys on the next video.